to bring up uh, in regards to everything. It's a little bit off topic, but it's about the agenda in, uh, in total. And that is, um, I saw on the news the other day that um, a lot of states in America are actually digging up their sealed roads. Not all of them, but there's a lot of uh, country roads that they're digging up. They're selling a lot of the street land. And straight away, I thought of Agenda 21 and what's written in there about, uh, you know, giving back to nature and all this sort of thing. I just wonder what, uh, if you guys have heard about that and what oh. your thoughts on oh, 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 I think you're talking about the rewilding project. Is that right, Willie? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Andrew, do you know much about that? The rewilding project and Agenda 21, I am far from an, an expert on it. But if, if I may interject right back to what I went to, I don't think they intend. You know what? The Gulf of Mexico and the Corexit, I've said it before and I'll stick by this. It does look like a chemical attack. It does look like depopulation. But I think they are counting on natural events to do the depopulating and their rewilding. But that's, again, my personal view, and I will not claim to be an expert. It's just simply my conclusion based on what I've researched. Well, what about you, Griff? Agenda 21. Do you do you think that they're uh, they're playing their card there, or do you think that this is just all coincidence? I think they stumbled into something as they as government agencies do quite often, and now uh, uh, it's been, they're taking advantage of it uh, to uh, to affect the population, and eventually will uh, drive those people out of the uh, out of the uh, the Gulf area. I, I believe. I don't I don't think uh, they could have planned this. I've never seen government agencies, for instance, plan anything and carry it through. They stumble into it and then they bumble through it. That's what I believe. Yeah, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, folks, we got about 18 minutes to go. The number to call, 914-803-4151. If you have a question or comment for our panel tonight, uh, be more than happy to uh, get you on and, um, and speak to uh, any one of them. Uh, that that you can uh, you know we'll, we'll give you the best answer that we possibly can. Uh, now, as far as this is concerned, guys, I mean, here we are. We're facing all this kind of stuff. Um, for somebody who hasn't prepared yet or hasn't started preparing yet, uh, Dr. Prepper, where do they start? Always start at the beginning. First of all, what do you need to prepare for if you live along the coast you've got to consider some things different from me living a uh, hundred miles inland at several hundred feet of elevation I don't have to worry about Saddam unless it's going to take out Canada I'm pretty safe I don't so that's not uh, we don't have hurricanes hit here yet uh, when Corpus Christi and Houston are getting hit like a son of a gun we don't even get rain sometimes uh, why? Because we live just far enough inland over uh, dry land that things uh, dissipate. The, the storms dissipate very quickly. Um, I did find out, though, after Griff kind of, uh, uh, punched me up, I, that I live within a, one mile of a fault zone called the Balcones Fault. It's never been active, but the tectonic plates are in position to slide. Thank you very much. I thought I moved to the safest place in the country when I came here. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, and I moved here from the, from Utah, where I, li where the, I lived on the Wasatch Fault. Um, so anyway, the, the, I, I've done the best I can with what I knew, and now I find out one, I'm in the red zone from the Gulf out fall, and I live on uh, a fault. Uh, we're looking at another place. Griff put it in my head that I should really go somewhere else, and I'm. Honestly, looking at real estate elsewhere because I want I want to be able to have my shelter and my bug out place in one in one location. So, what's most important to you? Is it cold weather? If you live north, cold weather has to be probably more important than the hot weather. If you live down in Arizona, you certainly got to shelter yourself from hot uh, from the hot weather. So, first of all, do you have the, have you picked a place that in which you can reside, stay, and be safe, be secure? Can you turn it? Can you turn your home into a safe haven? Do you live in a place where you can make your home a safe haven? That's the most important question. And I, I set down four parameters for myself. I decided that I would be able to bloom where I was planted. Whatever I picked out, the place I picked. We have an 85-year-old home that stood the, the test of time for 85 years. We're just going to stay here. Uh, our home is a. We have a personal convenience store. All the stuff we like to eat is in the house. Uh, is in, in our house. 
and see, I'm telling everything I know. Uh, our family can camp out. We don't have any lights. If the electricity goes out, we have water. We don't have to worry about that. I do have a big donkey engine. I can I can turn up about 27 and a half uh, kilo, uh, kilowatts of energy and, and feed half the town. Uh, I, I have it in place ready to go. I've made my investment in that stuff, and also I've gotten out of debt. Those are four things that we decided we have to do, and I think those are things people – People have to sit down and say, what's most important to me? Is it the kids? Is it the kids' education? Is it the size of car we drive? Whatever. You've got to really determine what's important, set the goals based on that, and then just do it. I would say, you know, obviously, if your shelter is good and you have clothing to put on your body and you've got a place to poop, you know, you're in pretty good shape. Then you start worrying about the commodities, water. How can you store water? A lot of it. How can you store food? Water is cheap to store, by the way. That's the neat thing about it. And you can have water stored simply by putting a number of barrels in your in your garage and, and cycling the water through before it goes into your house, and you'll always have fresh water, barrels of fresh water. You can do that. You can go down to a box store and buy all the parts and pieces for a couple of hundred bucks to store up a 1,000 gallons of water. So then you get your water squared away if that's important to you. How about food, medication, uh, all the other kinds of things that you need? What do you like to eat? Start storing what you eat, eat what you store. There's a third part to that. Everybody says that. I brought that up some 36 years ago in my first book. Store what you eat, eat what you store. Use it or lose it is the third part of that. If you don't know how to use it, if you don't have the education, experience, and knowledge to utilize it, it's going to be wasted. It's going to go bad sitting in, on the shelf. So you want to learn how to use what – store what you eat. Just learn to write down what it is, get a, get a picture of it. Know what it is, start buying, and start buying now. Get it in place and then start using it. Work your way through just like you, uh, first in, first out basis. And then just get more more and more and more uh, until you feel like you've got a supply that will in, help you endure however long you think the problem that, you, that you're setting your house up for will last. So if it's unemployment is your biggest problem or uh, your job security isn't good, and it may take you a year or two to get a job. You better have a year or two of food. You need money to be able to pay for your mortgage in advance or be pay, pay for it when it comes due. There are lots of things you have to do. So for, first of all, what's the worst-case scenario for a natural, uh, a man-caused, or a personal disaster? If you figure out what those things are, then you have the basis for your planning of what you're going to buy and how much you're going to buy and how long you'll need to buy it for. Wow. So that's how you do it, folks. If you haven't started yet, I suggest uh, – now that's uh, drprepper.com, right, Doc? That's your website? Drprepper.com. Yes, sir. Sp spell out the doctor, though, correct? Right. You spell doctor or you get some famous drink. <laughs> <laughs> and, folks, you they can go on – everything. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You, you can go on Dr. Prepper's website, and um, he has available under the freebies tab some of, the, uh, some of his book. Now, I have a copy of his book, and I can tell you it is the most thorough preparation handbook I have ever seen. It's not really a handbook. It's more of like a um, – It's a two-hand like book. <laughs> yes, it's like two handbooks. Definitely, you need two hands for this book. But if anybody uh, wants a good insight on how to prepare and, and has absolutely no idea or wants to do it better, I thought I knew. I knew nothing. And, and that's, the, that's what it all comes down to is that – He's put a lot of time and effort into it over 30 years, right, Doc? Uh, I'm, it's been out 36 years. It's the best-selling book ever in the genre. Yeah, we've, pretty, right. we've been lucky. Really so, so by all means, you know, if, if, if you guys need some information, it's uh, drprepper.com. Just a reminder, folks, uh, remember this Thursday, we will no longer be doing shows on uh, Freedom Link Radio. We're going to be doing shows as Freedom Link Radio, but on the Intel Hub Radio Network. So make sure you go to the Intel Hub channel starting this Thursday, and, um, and we'll be uh, uh, broadcasting our shows from there. Now, up next on the Intel Hub channel is uh, Traveling One's show, uh, where he goes over all of the uh, events that are affecting us. He, he does a very good job of laying it all out for folks, and I encourage you to go there and attend. That's at 10 o'clock Eastern tonight on the Intel Hub uh, channel on Blog Talk Radio. Um, but we got about 10 minutes left, left so I want to get some closing remarks as far as, uh, as uh, where you guys feel this is going, so uh, kind of keep it down to like two minutes.